All right, so we thought that the uh, goose story was over, um, but it's not. Uh, yesterday, on local news channel, there was a story um, that aired on the television about uh, a woman who had a uh, needy goose um, here approach her and she picked it up and uh, uh, looking at the news it was the um, it was the uh, injured gosling she named that gosling Lucy and uh, she was under the impression that the other gosling was Lucy's mate um, I haven't been able to get in contact with her uh, to to kind of fill her in on the real story um, but I did leave her messages and stuff. Any case, then uh, I was in a meeting today, but John came out to check on them. And uh, when he got out here, the goslings were here. And um, then the gander, who we'd encountered the other day when the goslings were absent, the gander flew in, landed by the goslings, and then led them away. Um, in flight, led them away to the other side of the lake, away from John, and uh, and they 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 flew. He said it took a little bit for the for the uh, injured um, Gosling to fly, but it was able eventually, ultimately, to fly. And uh, so now Mahoney and I have come out, and we're just going to get a little bit of. Uh, footage of the three of them together now um, because uh, the goose story is continuing so we don't know where it's gonna take but it looks like it's heading toward a much happier ending because the uh, the gander has gone back to taking care of the goslings and uh, so at least they've got a parent now and we know that um, even the injured one with a little effort is able to fly and so that's all uh, good news for these geese also the uh, uh, we're going through a little thaw now might even be some open water get again uh, here at some point or these guys might be able to pick up and fly to the river um, they sure went somewhere the other day when we were out here looking for them. So anyway, so we're approaching them now and uh, I'll get some video when we get closer. All right, so we're approaching them now. I don't know how close we'll be able to get before the uh, gander gets spooked. And preferably, we won't get close enough to freak him out. Um, what I suspected is that uh, when the sun goes down, the, the gander is probably going to take them to the river to join up with one of the uh, one of the uh, big clans um, at the open river crags. They're obviously still really attached to this place to be uh, coming back when there's no other geese coming back here at this point. All of them are in win all the others are in winter mode, spending the night on the river, and then uh, going up to the stubble fields by day. These geese are coming here which is a little longer flight than a lot of the other geese have to take to get to stubble fields, but not that far. So this, yeah, yeah, mama, this is still their place and they're still grieving, but it's nice to see that the gander has uh, come back to take care of them now.
the birds. Definitely got people's attention nowadays. People have been feeding them, obviously. <laughs> Which means that they'll probably stay here for most of the winter, as long as people keep feeding them. Alright, so the goose story continues. They've now got media attention here, they've got people bringing them food. Pretty interesting. Yeah, I have been to uh, lots of urban areas where um, there's wild duck and goose populations that are really very tame, um, that expect people to feed them, and that will approach people um, who, you know, enter the parks where they're at. Maybe that's, maybe this is going to be the start of something like that in Lethbridge. There's never been here that kind of, uh, you know, population of wild waterfowl that are uh, approaching uh, humans. That's because we're told when you go to school here, you're always told never feed the animals. And they say it's because you had too many deer, and the deer will attack you if you don't feed them and they're expecting to be fed. So if you grew up here, you've always been told don't feed the animals, because otherwise you could get attacked. Right, and that is something that happens with uh in the places where there's geese especially, some of the geese can get very pushy about being fed by people. Um, but at the same time, uh, I've been to places where, you know, the geese aren't pushy. And you can walk on this smaller stuff. All right. Yeah, so I've been to places where the, uh, the geese aren't so pushy. <laughs> good, good. And, uh, you know, the ducks just approach people or, you know, in some, some city parks you got uh, lots of small birds um, just, just uh, like chickadees, for instance, might just fly up and eat out of people's hands, that kind of thing. So, Maybe that's the beginning of something like this for Lethbridge. Maybe this is how um, how that happens. You get one or two approachable birds that are in a tough situation, and then um, you know some people reach out to them. And uh, next thing you know, when the others come back here, the other uh, geese start coming back here when the water's open. They uh, might uh, observe what's going on um, with these couple of goslings and join in. And pretty soon, you got, you know, a relatively short time, you got a whole population of geese who are used to being fed at this place. So uh, it's just a hypothesis, a potential of what could happen here. But I'm definitely going to continue like 
following the story as far as it goes to see what I can see. almost dusk and some of the other geese from around town are making their way toward the river already as you just saw and I wanted to uh, stick back for a few minutes here and see whether or not these guys decide to fly or not. This is curious. There's another goose kind of circle in here. As if it wants to land with be with these guys. Which is bizarre. Usually they'll definitely head out to the river. And it looks like yeah, it looks like that's where that one's going. It's flying away. I don't know what the lone goose swinging back was about. All quiet here so far. It's getting pretty dark and they're still sticking around. This is a woman who saw the news report last night and uh, she had raised a uh, gosling this summer and she thought maybe it was the one she had raised. I just talked to her and told her uh, what I knew about them. Yeah, she's got really distinctive facial markings. Yeah, and it, it almost looks bigger, white here than what the Yeah, had. yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, and she had white, a little bit of white above her eye. know what's up at the moment but the lady left and these geese are kind of on the move but I, I think if they were gonna fly off to the river they'd have taken that opportunity when the lady was approaching them you know to do so never seen a goose stay anywhere else but at the open river crags in winter. <laughs> but it really doesn't seem like they're going anywhere.
Yeah, so I've weeded them out uh, as long as I'm going to. Um, I know it doesn't look like it in the camera, uh, but it's getting pretty dark here. Dark enough that the street lights are on and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I would wait a little bit longer, but I'm starting to get cold. But uh, I think they would have already taken off already to the river. The other geese that uh, were moving to the river have already passed overhead and, and gone. So, um, it's interesting though, the kind of attention they're getting. They got people coming out to feed them. They got uh, that lady that was just out <coughs> seeing if, if, uh, if it was Gus, uh, her gosling that she raised this summer that uh, left, flew away in October. Um, <laughs> but it uh, wasn't Gus. Uh, of course, it's Lucy. So anyway, Lucy Goosey. <laughs> and uh, looks like they're staying the night here. So, pretty curious. Um, but the story goes on. We'll keep following. <laughs> 